Now that we've passed all the technicalities, it's time to get back to why the standard deviation is the most commonly used measure of spread, why it does better than any of the others that you've studied. What do we know about it? We know thus far that it's non-negative and it has the same units as the list. Well, that's great. We wouldn't not want that. But all of the other measures of spread also have that. What is it that makes the SD special? It's what we said some time ago, which is that the main property of the SD is you stand at the average and you walk a few SDs on either side. Over that interval, you will pick up a chunk of the histogram. And the SD is such a number that if you walk two, three, four SDs on either side of the average, you will pick up the vast majority of the data. And I know this is disquieting. People want to know exactly what I mean by vast majority, exactly what I mean by a few. We will make all of that precise. And for this, we are grateful to another great Russian mathematician, Chebyshev. And he was the one who made this precise. Chebyshev was the teacher of Markov. And there's some controversy as to whether Chebyshev actually had Markov's inequality before Markov did. You know, mathematicians are human too, and so they have all these human foibles. Uh, if you're looking up Chebyshev, please be aware that there are many, many spellings of his name, including one very commonly that has an S in here. Uh, the one that I like most is that. For those of us who read English as a normal language, will notice that this is a most unusual sequence of letters and indeed you could be forgiven for thinking that these two exclamation marks are actually part of the name itself. Anyway, Chebyshev is the person who helped us understand why the SD is the thing to use. And here is his inequality. You're used to pictures like this by now. So here is a, an arbitrary histogram of a list of numbers. And on the horizontal axis here is the balance point, that is the average. And now what I'm doing is I'm walking in units of an SD. So here's one SD to the right, one SD to the left. So that point is the average plus one SD, the average plus two SDs, the average plus three SDs is here, and so on. And so on coming back down, the average, the average minus one SD, the average minus two SDs, the average minus three SDs, and so on. And what we're doing is we're going some number of SDs on either side, an equal number of SDs on either side. And how many SDs we're going is called K. So we're going to the point average plus KSDs and average minus KSDs. Now in my picture, what does K look like? K looks like close to three, but not quite. So there's one SD, two SDs, not quite three SDs, maybe two and three quarters, two and two thirds, something like that. So in summary, we've walked the same distance on either side of the average. And Chebyshev's bound says that if you look at the two tails together, the proportion that's at or bigger than the average plus KSDs, or at or smaller average minus KSDs, that total proportion is at most 1 over K squared. That's a simple little bound, very usable. And what I'd like to do now is I'd like to see what it means for particular values of k. For if I walk a certain amount, then how much can I expect will be in the two tails? And if I can't say that, then what is the maximum that could be in those two tails together? So let's state this formally. We have k any positive number. And Chebyshev's inequality says, in any list, 
the proportion of entries that are k or more SDs away from the average. So away from the average means in either direction. That proportion in the two tails is at most 1 over k squared. So this is just writing down in English what you saw in the picture. What does it mean for a particular value of k? If we go two or more SDs away from the average, and how do you do that? Well, you start at the average, and you go two SDs up and two SDs down. And look at the two tails that start at those two points. Those two tails together have a proportion of at most 1 over 2 squared. That's 1 over 4. And since 1 over 4 is 25%, you can say that at most 25% of the list is outside the range average plus or minus 2 SDs. By the way, I just use range there in the ordinary English sense, from here to there, not in the sense of a measure of spread. Well, so if at most 25% lie outside an interval, then inside the interval you have at least 75% is the opposite. And that is now telling you something. You look at the interval average plus or minus two SDs. So you stand at the average, you walk two SDs on either side, and you look at what percent of the data you have picked up in that interval, and that percent will be at least 75%, no matter what the list. That's the key. If you go to three SDs on either side, then one ninth of the entries, that's one over three squared of the entries, are outside in the two tails, which means at least eight ninths of the entries are inside the range average plus or minus three SDs. That's a big percent. That's more than 88%. And that is true for any list at all, no matter what the list. If you stand at the average and you walk three SDs on either side, you will pick up more than 88% of the data. And that is what makes the SD so remarkable as a measure of spread. And so here we have a rough statement that we made earlier which said no matter what the list, the vast majority of entries would be in the range average plus or minus a few SDs, and now Chebyshev has made that precise. No matter what the list, if you go an average plus or minus K SDs, then the proportion in that interval will be at least 1 minus 1 over K squared. This is, of course, most interesting for large-ish k. I say large-ish because k doesn't have to be very large, even when k is equal to just 3. Going 3 SDs on either side helps you pick up a big proportion of the data. This inequality is, in my view, one of the two main reasons the SD is used, most commonly as a measure of spread. The second one is about to turn up in stat 2.2x, if you stay with me. For now, what I'd like to do is examine Chebyshev's inequality and what it says for one tail and not two. So just to recall, it says if you go KSDs away from the average on either side, then the total in the two tails is at most 1 over k squared. So it's an upper bound, and it's on a total proportion in two tails. And what are the two tails? Well, the left tail starts at the average minus KSDs, and you go take everything that's less than that. The right tail starts at the average plus KSDs, and you take everything that's greater than that greater than or equal to, I should say, and less than or equal to, just to be precise. Now, how much then can you say is in one of these tails? Well, remember, you're not saying how much there is total in the two tails. You're saying at most how much there is. 
So if you know that two things together add up to at most 10%, then is it not true that each of them separately can be only at most 10%? After all, if one of them was 12%, then the sum would be even greater. So even though Chebyshev has given a bound on the total proportion of two tails, you can use the very same bound more roughly as a bound on each of the individual tails. The proportion in the left tail is at most one of a k-squared. The proportion in the right tail is at most one of a k-squared. Let me just check something. Did you want to halve it? If these two together are at most 10%, do you want to say, do you desperately want to say that one of these then is at most 5%? Eh, not really. Because you don't know that these two tails are equal. You don't know that the proportions are equal because you don't know anything about the symmetry of the histogram. So in general, you cannot say that the proportion in a single tail is half is bounded by half of what Chebyshev says for the total of two tails. You need a bit of symmetry for that. You need to know that the two tails are equal. So in general, you don't know that. And in general, you cannot halve the bound. Let's just use this and it will become clear. So we'll return to a problem that we had before. We had a population of people and their average age was 20 years. And we were looking at the percent that were more than 80 years old. And now we're going to give ourselves an SD. But just to remember what we did last time, we bounded that proportion by looking at Markov's inequality. And we could use Markov's inequality because age is a non-negative variable. Markov requires that. And the way to use it is to say, okay, I'm looking at my edge is 80. That is 4 times the average, which was 20. And so Markov's bound says that the proportion more than 80 years old is at most 1 divided by 4, which is 25%. And so this is a calculation we've done before. I've just repeated it. Markov's inequality says at most 25% are more than 80 years old. And we were very happy with that at the end of lecture 3.5, but now we know better. It's not wrong, but you know, it's really not good enough. We have an SD now, and we understand about SDs. If one SD is 5 years, then how much is 3 SDs? It's 15 years. So if I stand at the average and I walk 3 SDs up, I'm ending up at 20 plus 15, that's 35 years. We just said that outside the range, average plus or minus 3 SDs, there's really not much. 4 SDs is 20 years. So 20 plus 20, that's 40 years. Outside 4 SDs, there's a tiny amount, and this is a whole lot more than 4 SDs away. They can't possibly be 25% in that tail. Now Markov isn't saying there's 25% in that tail, he's saying there can't be any more than 25%, but our gut sense now is that there's quite a bit less than 25%, so let's see if we can get at that, and we can get at that by using Chebyshev. Markov did not use the SD, but Chebyshev does. So to use Chebyshev bound, look at how far 80 years is from the average. It's 60 years above the average, how many SDs is that? That's 12 SDs above the average. So the edge of your interval is 12 SDs to the right of the average, and you're looking at the tail beyond that. We just said that you can use Chebyshev's inequality for any single tail, so applied to the right tail. You're looking at the proportion in the right tail beyond 12 SDs. That proportion by Chebyshev's inequality is at most 1 over 12 squared. That's 1 in 144. That's 0.7 of 1%. That's even less than 1%, roughly. It's actually 0.67 something. 
And so, if we're going to be very careful and even look at this edge, which I know some of you are doing, because our question says more than eight years old and the bound is on more than or equal to, you recall from our previous discussion that dropping the equality preserves the inequality. And so we have that at most 0.7 of 1% of the people are more than 80 years old. And that's a very, very tiny percent compared to Markov's bound of 25%. So in the battle between student and teacher, the teacher wins. This is a much better bound by Chebyshev. Both bounds are correct. Markov says the proportion is no more than 25%. He's right. Chebyshev says, but in fact, it's no more than 0.7 of a percent. And he can be a lot sharper because he is using the SD as well, not just the average. And the SD is a measure of spread. The measure of spread is exactly what you need to figure out what's going on in the tails, in the extremes of the data.